Welcome to the Legatum Institute this afternoon for the latest in our series of lectures and seminars, The Roads to Freedom, in the course of which we'll be looking at some of the obstacles that have arisen on those roads in the latest decades of British, European and world history. We'll be looking today at the nature of scientific freedom and some of the ways in which government money may liberate or hinder the exercise of freedom of thought in the sciences. With me, I have Don Braben and Samir Zeki, both distinguished figures in the recent and present history of University College London, and we're going to be talking about venture science, a phrase largely coined by Don Braben. So we'll start with Don. Don, what is venture science? Venture research is, is uh, um, research to find an alternative to peer review. Peer review is the, is the universal problem. It's a global problem. Um, peer review is notoriously conservative. It undermines uh, originality and uh, individuality. Uh, and uh, it, uh, since these subjects, since scientific research uh, is the, uh, one of the major uh, um, causes of economic growth, this could we well be one of the gravest problems facing humanity. And would it be sensible to say that a synonym for venture, venture research would be Fundamental research. Oh, it's all, yes, research. it's always uh, it's always fundamental research. We are concerned with the most fundamental research there is. It's also the cheapest research there is, by the way, since technology doesn't appear anywhere. In it, it is all science. Um, so we look for people whose ideas uh, 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 will change the way we think about something important. Um, we asked actually our scientists. Uh, scientists. One of the selection is. Uh, 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 d does this research stand a chance of winning a Nobel Prize? Well, most scientists would say, <laughs> no, no, not in, not in Europe. Um, uh, they would be modest, of course, uh, even, uh, even the Max Planck's of this world. But um, that's what we look for, and that's what we try to find out. So what makes peer review such a problem? What, what makes peer review peer so review conservative? It's based on opinion. Science is not democratic. Um, it assumes that, that uh, experts, that, uh, that an expert opinion is valid. It's useless. It is absolutely useless. Um, uh, 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 I could give you all sorts of anecdotes about, you know, science is the belief in the ignorance of experts, Richard Feynman's quotation. Um, uh, and this, this, this call, this definition has been ignored, you know, Richard Feynman has been ignored, completely ignored. And now the whole world, as far as I can tell, is based on peer, is the, the whole scientific world, that is, is based on peer review. It is unavoidable. You cannot avoid it. Uh, and, uh, uh, but success rates now are around about 25%. And peer review is what the government wants you to Government do. and private funders also follow the same rules. I think it is a big, big problem. Uh, I agree with you that it is a question of opinion. What, in, the, in an ideal world, what you want is somebody like Lorenzo the Magnificent, who said to Michelangelo, just go and do the work and come and have dinner with me occasionally and tell me what you've that's, done. That's right. That's what you need. Now, but there's a practicality of how much money there is in the kitty and how much you can dispense. I mean, science has become, it's a major, major business. We've got so many scientists. They're all after a shrinking cake. And so how do you go about it? Now, one of the things uh, I regret very much about universities, where much of the science is done, is that universities will not, for example, let's assume that you've done a very good piece of work, but then you've applied for money and they told you no. The university will not come in to bail you out for a period of five or six years, which is what they should do. And if you talk to uh, uh, Fred Sanger and uh, Higgs, they will tell you, look, if, if we were living in today's world, we would not have achieved any of this. We would not be funded, correct? They had the privilege and, uh, and luxury of being at the, the Laboratory of Molecular Biology, places like that, where there wasn't an accounting every day. There wasn't a sort of a worksheet of what we did. They were allowed to do whatever they wanted, and they came up with brilliant ideas. I think that there has to be there has to be a solution. Now, I think the the the, the most important problem there is 
how do you choose the people to whom you want to give freedom? Now, you see, uh, Lorenzo was very smart. He chose Michelangelo. <laughs> yes, <laughs> without much competitor we in the wheel of genius. We chose Ken Seddon and, and, and Martin Polikoff and all the other people. We, uh, uh, you I mean, you've had a fantastic record of success with your venture. Uh, yes, but you, you say that, but nobody else does. Uh, the minister's coming today, an ex-minister um, uh, 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 is, is coming today. They do not accept that what we have done is exceptional. You know, but why don't they? I, uh, I really don't know. Well, I think we're going to ask David Willis that question this afternoon. We and could. We'll be very we interested could. to find out I the answer. Mean, I think that the scientific establishment is so... Uh, um, it's taken a wrong turn, a, a major wrong turn, and it dare not admit now, after you know, 20, 30 years down the line, that it has made a major mistake. And so, therefore, uh, even though I've just written to Greg Clark well, six months ago, and I've just got a reply after s almost six months. Um, Greg Clark is the uh, Daily Willis, uh, Willis successor. And he said, maybe if peer review had been av available uh, during the early years, it would have been more successful than, uh, uh, than it was. I mean, the, the guy doesn't know what he's talking about, if I may say so. Uh, and uh, he also thinks that that venture research, that world-leading research, is expensive. It's not. It's the cheapest there is. So I don't know. Um, uh, 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 I don't know why the why the institutions, why the research councils, they all refuse to look at the venture research experience and how successful it's Possibly been. Possibly because their assumptions are so deeply embedded. They're deeply embedded. They can't really afford to question them. There is a problem in what you're saying, a problem of communication with the scientists, and I'll tell you what it is. When you say it's cheap, you see, ingrained in our minds is that it's extremely expensive. So we, I can understand people saying, well, how, how can you say a thing like that? How can you say it's cheap? I mean, if you want to employ five people, Already, your, it, your it, uh, salary packet is running at a million. If you want right. to employ five people. Well, all right, if, if you employ... But you don't. Them, okay, one person. But one I, or I, maybe two. No, what I'm trying to say to you is that when you communicate with people who've been hardened by the peer review system for so many years and think that it works, mistakenly, I agree with you, uh, one has to explain to them very clearly why you can do without the money, why you don't need that much money when in fact all the experience goes against uh, that, that, that way of thinking. Well, we'll have David Willis with us for questioning in the interval between session one and session two this afternoon. So we're looking forward to some answers as well to those questions. Thank you both very much indeed.